Thank you. And I'm actually spoiling the program because before you start my timer, just wait, wait one second. How about we do something completely different? I'm, I'm really just, they have no idea I'm doing this now. How about we give those people that organized this event for us a big applause? Thank you. Okay, you're already warm, right? So the good news is, when I'm done, you are halfway through. That's good, right? Because actually, we should give applause to you because you're the one sitting and cheering for us. So thanks for that. And thanks for holding. Let's start. Um, hi, my name is Laura. I used to be an astronaut instructor for several years now. I'm self-employed. And I'm going to tell you today why astronauts are anything but perfect. And I hope by telling you about this, that you will actually also change something in your life, right? And we'll start with this picture. Anna Fisher took this several, several years ago. And it's one of my favorite pictures. And this is actually what also inspired me to go into human spaceflight. Well, apart from the fact that I made my parents sit with me in the backyard counting satellites and uh, doing all the things about astronomy and reading about how the Earth evolved and yeah, having a little fling for math and physics actually helped me to go through my physics studies and eventually applying for a job for the European Space Agency to become, wow, a teacher for big children with big dreams. So I actually ended up being an astronaut instructor for almost 10 years of my life. And we will draw on that a little bit today. And one thing that I love doing, what you see now, I love talking, that's good. Um, I also love talking about space. So I'm a keynote speaker, and while I'm doing that, I like to ask my audience and people I meet, just like, I say, astronaut, what comes to your mind? And if I say that, all of a sudden, you all have a picture in your mind and go like, oh, cool guy, cool girl, right? So what I hear as a keynote speaker when I say astronaut, three things. Highly self-motivated, very disciplined, and never makes a mistake. Oh, well, having been an astronaut instructor, I kindly disagree, right? But, okay, three things, great, and if you look in this picture, of course, if we look at astronauts, the picture we get is like, this is this hero image. People, they're just doing awesome jobs. They're stepping on rockets, hundreds of tons of fuel. They must be, well, yes, crazy, but really perfect. Or maybe not, okay. So I was wondering, maybe we can take this and I can put this question forward and we can actually find out together, what makes a person become an astronaut? What is it? Why are they chosen? Why are not other people chosen? So let's find out the answer to this. And whenever you have a question like this in life, what do you do? Well, of course, you ask the internet. So I asked the internet, what does a good astronaut need? And the internet tells me, well, you need two things, obviously. You need a spacesuit, and you need a helmet, right? So, and then, of course, that's not enough of the research yet. I can't go out with that. So you do more research, so you ask again. Any uh, search engine will tell you, well, of course, inside the helmet, you have to have a big smile. Okay, two things I can tell you by my own experience. This suit and the helmet does not make you become an astronaut. Okay, well... I have to go further than that. So I have to draw on my former life, working for the European Space Agency, working in the Astronaut Training Center in Cologne in Germany. And while doing that, I had tons of different occasions to meet with our current astronauts, astronauts who have flown to the space station, astronauts who are right there on the space station. I have been training in Houston, in Moscow, in Cologne. I was part of training teams doing procedure writing. I sat with cosmonauts and astronauts and Besides doing simulations and working a lot with air conditioning installations, I can tell you I did some cool stuff as well. And while doing that, of course, well, the question came, okay, if I can't find the answer in the World Wide Web, I'll try myself. So I did apply for one of the astronaut selections. Didn't go that well. But hey, I can at least tell you how it went and my lessons learned from it. So. Let me tell you about what happens when you apply to become an astronaut here in Europe. When you apply, apart from some prerequisites you have to give, you get, if you're lucky, invited 
uh, to the German Aerospace Institute in Hamburg, and you have to sit through cognitive skill tests. And they look a little bit like this. So you get tested on math and physics, you get tested on normal life questions, you get tested on some orientational things, and well, they continue with some more common sense things and memory tests, and then, you know, just to spice it up, they change the orders, right? So. Just to give you an idea about what astronauts have to go through in their pre-astronaut life, this is about a really short input of eight hours of those tests. So after having sat in front of a computer and answering all the questions and doing memory tests and then doing math calculations while you're doing the memory tests and then flying joystick airplanes and crashing them and so on and so forth, your brain starts being more liquid than solid, right? Okay, question remains. What are they looking for? Like, we want to answer the question, what do they have, the ones that get chosen? Okay, let me draw you a graph. I'm a physicist, I like numbers and graphs. So we draw attention span versus time, because obviously, with all these tests that you are given, they must deal with attention span. If we do look at it, all of our attention span follows the same way. You learn something, you get better at it, you peak at it, you got 100% maybe even, but after some time you're declining because your brain just cannot take it, right? Well, who do you think will be chosen? If you look at this graph, obviously, the middle part is very interesting. And that's the answer I would get to the question, like who do you think will be chosen to become an astronaut? Well, it must be, for sure, be that person that can concentrate to 100% and perform at 100%. No? Well, yes, obviously, attention span is very good, but latest research has already shown that in the last couple of years, attention span, due to some small black devices in our hands, they kind of decline. And if we follow that research even more, maybe attention span should not be taken into account. So. Let's move away and not choose astronauts solemnly on attention span. Maybe there's something different, right? And that difference is also something that, by the way, is very related to where you are going to step into or where you are right now. In the business world, the World Economic Forum actually says that memory or concentration attention span is actually declining in the next couple of years. This is not what you should be looking at right now, but what should we be looking at? So let's go back to that chart that we just had. So we're not looking at the middle part. So if we're not looking at the middle, where are we looking? We should be looking at the back. What happens there? Well, your concentration span goes down. You're making mistakes. Hang on. You're choosing astronauts by looking at how they make mistakes. And I said, yes, we do. So. When I sat through these tests, it's obvious that you cannot perform at 100% level all the time. In a very short amount of time, you will start messing up big time. And this is when all the psychologists, all of a sudden, they just go, oh, interesting, let's see. Yeah, because what happens is, at the end, when you are, start to make mistakes, the interesting part is how you recover. So what seems to be the most important part of an astronaut selection is how you recover from your mistakes. So all of a sudden, we go away from that middle peak, which is when you're performing at your 100%, your perfection level, to something completely different, which now goes to excellence. And you say, yes, Laura, okay, excellence, but is there a difference between perfection and excellence? And I asked this to many people, and I asked it to myself, and we got so many different answers that I would like to give it to you in a table. So here's the best way for me to describe to you the difference between perfection and excellence. When we go through our day and we perform on a perfectionist level, we fear. We fear that we cannot perform all the time to the right. We are angry sometimes to ourselves that we are making mistakes. We're judgmental because something got in the way of our plans. And we start making even more mistakes and we get even angrier with that. So imagine we would choose astronauts who are living and working on a space station by just solemnly looking at their perfection level. We would not know anything about how they would perform under pressure conditions, under conditions that are unexpected. 
Whereas if we move to the other side of the table, excellence, if you allow yourself to make mistakes in life and recover from it, find your solution, all of a sudden, you become so much more relaxed. You're so much more relaxed because you don't have to perform at 100%. Doesn't mean you, you want to make mistakes, but you, you know and you're sure of yourself that even if you do make mistakes, you can recover from them. And the most important point for me here is that accepting term. And I want to tell you why. Because in all my 10 years working for the space agency and meeting all these great, great people who have flown or will be flying to space, there are three things I can describe them with. They're very reliable, they're very curious in their life, and they're very, very social beings. But apart from these three things, they're just so positive. And that's something that I just realized by looking at excellence a little bit more. They're really positive people. Why is it? Why out of all of these thousands of people applying to become astronauts, you choose the ones that can cope with the uncertain, that can cope with things they haven't gone to plan. Because for a perfectionist, well, you get out of bed, your day looks like this, right? A straight line. This is what you have in mind. But in general, our day looks like this. And I think you all know what I'm talking about. So we choose people by their capability of accepting the unwanted, the unplanned, and the uncertain. And now back to our business, back to your life, back to something that should change you now, back to where I say, don't be perfectionist, start thinking in excellent terms. So if we look at what the World Economic Forum said as the top three skills in 2015, we had complex problem solving, coordinating, and people management. In 2020, well, it's still the same. Number one will always be probably complex problem solving. We have to use our brain to actually make it work. But the most interesting thing in just five years, creativity moved up under the top three. And creativity is what you need when life becomes uncertain. You have to use your brain to come up with creative solutions to problems that you couldn't even have imagined. This goes further that even on other sources, and I can put down uh, many more, creativity now ranks under the top three priorities when we are looking for people for new jobs and new positions. So we want to have those people that can deal with the unexpected. So back to the astronauts, we want to choose the ones that can be on the space station and they perform really well, but they're also quite chilled when things don't go to plan. And in space, Sometimes things just do not go to plan, really. So creativity and being creative is something we should all foster in our minds. We should foster it so much that it should be our top priority. And I know it's pretty hard, especially for me sometimes. I have to you know, hold my own nose with that because it also means you have to realize who you are. And that's good because the world is ever changing. And I just wanted to put this little mark here, and I just snapshot it from one of the books I've been reading in the last couple of weeks, telling you, hey, sometimes we feel really relaxed, like no one, no one knows my things as well as I do. That's not true anymore. For people who have been working about 100 years ago, they could be sure that no one could touch them if they hadn't been working with them for 35 years. Now, Scientists have shown that already after three years in a job, someone else who you might have worked much longer in a company can come in and they have so much more knowledge. Our world is so vastly fast um, changing that you need to be always relearning and always trying to deal with new situations. That also means that you have to deal with what is inside of you, right? Yeah, yeah, I know why you're laughing. I feel that, right? I'm German. So what does, it, what does it make you, what does it give you to go away from this perfectionist little animal that's sitting inside of your chest saying, you did not pass your deadline? Well, it will actually help you to be so much more relaxed in your life, right? You can overcome things that are just rendered inside your genes sometimes. And this is a good example. 
you can take life a little bit less seriously. You can smile about it. Yes, the deadline is coming, you know it, but you'll have a solution for it. Why? Because you trust your brain. You trust your brain and you manage to always rethink in new creative ways. And to put it back to our guys on the space station, the world is changing. This is the first picture that was taken just a week ago with one of the new members, new countries that have touched the International Space Station from the UAE, and it just shows so nicely how you can also overcome cultural aspects. Not only can you work within yourself, no, it actually has a much more global level when you go from perfection to excellence. And one thing I want to give you as an example, if you want to start something, go and start it. Don't hesitate. Go and find a new perspective to look at things. Take it from the perfectionist level to an excellent level. Be more relaxed in your life. And if you start doing new things, well, you might be just like an Apollo astronaut. You start something new, you try, and you fail. But as the saying goes, well, you fall, you get up, you brush off the dust, and on you walk. And with that, thank you.